in this project that I'm talking about, we're reaching the bar a little. We're not talking about the everyday heritage around you. Uh, we're talking about the heritage that's decided by governments, by uh, national heritage boards, the, the kind of monuments or her heritage sites that's uh, decided by people with the expertise and knowledge that this is important to, to, to the entire country, to the entire world, the, the things that UNESCO work with. Uh, o Connected Open Heritage is the name of the project and uh, I'll give a little bit about uh, what we're doing with that. Uh, most of you have heard of Wikipedia, I hope. Uh, the Wikimedia movement is, is bigger than Wikipedia. Uh, it's an entire movement, uh, volunteers doing all the work. Uh, I'm not going to talk about all the projects here, but uh, the ones important are Wikimedia Commons, where we store images, uh, films, and uh, sound recordings of, of uh, importance that can help illustrate articles. And we also have the new cool project called Wikidata that's the facts um, that's important to, to Wikipedia. Uh, the number of inhabitants living in a city, the, the year someone was born, how long a river is, that kind of facts that doesn't need to be replicated all over the 294 language versions of Wikipedia. Instead, we can just put them in one place and uh, when there's a new mayor elected in a town, we update in one place instead of updating 294 languages. So it makes it a lot easier. Uh, so, so that's the, the movement and the background to, to this. Uh, the idea with Connected Open Heritage is that trying to get uh, data collected in, in, in one place, uh, instead of having it all spread out all over the world in, in one database here and one database there. Uh, we're trying to get monument data from, from countries all over the world and collect it to Wikidata. Uh, to have it collected in one place makes it easier to see what was built during a certain, certain time of, uh, uh, in the world, what was built uh, during this reign in, in one part and, and how can it be connected to other parts of the world. Uh, and we're also doing it because every now and then archives are burning down, they're destroyed in, in earthquakes, data is lost. Uh, it's getting better now that most is uh, on computers instead of on paper archive, but there's still a lot of data that needs to be digitized and, and stored in one place. And saving it to one place makes it easy to, to make sure that it stays on uh, and for, for the future also. Um, and we're also working with the local chapters of, of Wikimedia movement around the world to reach out to, to their local governments and to, to their local or organizations to, uh, to have a wider reach than one country can have or, or that than volunteers can have. For this project, we got funding by the Postcode Lotteries uh, cultural foundation. Uh, so, so it's a good thing that being able to work with organizations outside of the movement also, because it helps open up doors. Uh, we also have uh, a Wikipedian in residence at UNESCO, so, so we have a door opener there reaching out to governments in other countries, and, and they also are good at uh, collecting data and, and uh, setting that uh, kind of data up in, in databases. Uh, so, so what we're doing is reaching out. Uh, a couple of years ago uh, in the Netherlands, it started a competition called uh, Wiki Loves Monuments, which we'll talk more about that later on. Uh, and for that, we built up a database. Uh, later on, we figured out that it wasn't a good thing to, to have everything copied from one government database to another database because things were updated in one database and not in the other. So, so what we're trying to do is uh, synchronize the data and, and make sure that things aren't uh, forking into different databases because new monuments are added to the lists of the governments uh, or, or national heritage boards and volunteers are improving the data within the volunteer 
create a database and if we're not merging it together again, it's, it's two separate databases. So, so we're trying to um, get that connected again and, and try to move the data to Wikidata instead of having it in a separate database. Uh, we're reaching out and um, also not only collecting data, but also trying to collect uh, images of heritage sites, uh, specifically the ones that's at risk due to war or flooding or other circumstances that, and, and also the heritage sites that's not around anymore because uh, Palmyra, for instance, it's kind of hard to go there and take an image and say this is what it looked like because it's not there anymore. So uh, if we can find uh, someone who has been there taking pictures, it's possible to, to store it for future generations and having a lot of images, we can uh, maybe build 3D models and, and rebuild it as it used to look, but uh, we have to try to find the old images in, in archives and um, if someone has a travel journal from, from someone doing an excavation or something like that, uh, that's an awesome material to, to get to upload to Wikimedia Commons and to add to this collection. Uh, some of the things we're doing to, to do this is, or to, to reach out is uh, also doing editatons where we improve uh, Wikimedia related content, uh, writing articles about monument sites, about uh, heritage sites that uh, needed to, to be improved, translating it from one language to another because if I want to read about things that's in, in Arabic, I can't speak Arabic, so, so someone would need to translate it to English and then I can translate it from English to Swedish and someone can translate it from English to another language or making it more available in the world. Uh, and uh, the partners we're working with is both small archives, huge national archives, uh, private collections. Uh, we're trying to reach out to, to companies that has done work preserving heritage sites, uh, how we can uh, get them to release their material under free licenses and, and get them to see the value of contributing with this material, not locking it up into the, in, in their archive for no reason, but rather let it out to the world and, and make sure that others can see it. Uh, see it as uh, publicity work where they can also get more views and get a more positive image of themselves by helping with not only their core work, but rather when they do something documented and, and make sure that others can reuse it later on. Uh, we're also working with the funding partners because they want to see this happen, so, so they're helping out in, in this project and making sure that we can uh, uh, get out to new audiences and, and make this material wider available. What we're looking for as input in, in a project like this is images and films, uh, the knowledge of the experts that, that's both working uh, in archives, but also archeologists and, and uh, people with knowledge about heritage sites. Uh, and we're also looking for the data sets of, of uh, the National Heritage Board, for instance, because they have a huge database that we want to have and, and put it in Wikidata. Uh, and it's not only one-way cooperation because what organizations get back from releasing material and, and working in a project like this is um, everything is reusable. So, so if you need the images from a heritage site, there's maybe images available on Wikimedia Commons that you can reuse for any, any reason. Any, uh, if you want to have it in a book or on your web page, it's free to use and, and also commercially. Uh, you get knowledge back, not only you, but the entire world get the knowledge back when, when you add it to, to the Wikimedia project. Uh, for data sets, you get connections. So if one site has a unique identifier, we can say that, well, this unique identifier in this database is the same as this unique identifier in another database. And by connecting them together, we double the knowledge and, and make sure that not only are the 
data connected, it's, it's uh, multiplied when, when you connect it together. Uh, we raise awareness about the heritage uh, sites at risk. Uh, we look into why, are, why is it threatened, why is it uh, not taken care of. Uh, we connect research. Uh, this worked well in, in preserving a heritage site. Could work well in other parts of the world as well. So, so we're doing that also. Um, institutions releasing material get the visibility back because being Wikipedians and, and in the Wikimedia movement, we're good with the attribution and, and making sure that, well, this collection come, came from this museum, this collection came from this archive, this data set came from this uh, archive. So, so we're making sure that we're always telling where it came, came from and making sure that information is it's, it's possible to go back to the original source and see how you can work with it from that part. And with that, I'm leaving for Richard. Thank you, Axel. Uh, so I work for Wikimedia UK, uh, and one of the projects we run is the local branch of Wikilove's Monuments. It's the world's largest photography competition and happens to be based around the theme of cultural heritage. Since it started in 2011, more than one and a half million photos from 40 different countries have been submitted, which is a phenomenal crowdsourcing effort. We get photos from everything from Stonehenge and the Tower of London to Georgian post boxes and historic statues. In some cases, these images represent the only freely available photographs of culturally significant buildings and archaeological sites. We first ran the competition in the UK in 2013. We were a little late to the party. The rest of Europe beat us to it. Um, the charity staff have been involved in steering it, but it's only possible because of the work of our volunteers and the time they've devoted to organizing the competition, uh, having photo walks, and judging the entries as they come in. Uh, the competition is open for an entire month throughout September, and people are encouraged to take part by a banner at the top of every Wikipedia page. Uh, people are asked to go out and photograph their local heritage. When we began the competition in the UK, we wanted to encourage people to find a new way to interact with Wikipedia um, beyond just the text. Uh, we also wanted to improve the photographic record we have of various important sites we have, uh, we have covered within our encyclopedia. And of course, we wanted to encourage people to go out and interact with their heritage, to explore what was around them and learn about their past. The entries of the competition are a mixture of new photographs, often taken during September itself, and older images which just have to be sitting unused on old memory cards and we're collecting digital dust. You don't have to be the world's best photographer to take part and hundreds of people in the UK take part in a competition. Thousands do so from around the world. It's really exciting for people to see a photo that they took being used on a website which is visited by 500 million people every month, especially if they're helping document something which is important to them. Um, I got in touch with an amateur archaeologist based in Scotland who was using an interesting setup to take pictures. He was attaching a digital camera to a, to a kite and flying it up and taking pictures from um, several metres in the air. And he was astounded to learn that his collection of about 40 images were being seen by 2 million people a year. It's a really good incentive for people to get involved and share information. Now, to organize a competition on this scale, it's important to establish which subjects are eligible. To this end, each participating country uses their official list of historic sites. So in the UK, this means we include scheduled monuments and listed buildings of the various different grades. Now, this covers around half a million eligible sites. With so many to choose from, it became clear that there needs to be a way to search those sites to explore them in a sensible way. Now, when we first ran the competition in 2013, we only included 40,000 of these sites. It was a real challenge to run. This was because we ran the competition by, running, by creating manual lists on Wikipedia itself. 
It was incredibly time consuming for our volunteers. The software began to break when the lists were too long. And unless you knew the name of the site you were looking for, it was very difficult to navigate uh, this information. Uh, now, since that first incarnation, we switched over to having the information in Wikidata uh, and using that as the underlying platform. This allows us to move the information to a website which is a dedicated database as opposed to a wiki which is mainly intended for um, pros. Doing so meant that we could begin to use uh, some mapping tools so you could explore the information in a different way and it was much easier to uh, interrogate. The first step for us was therefore importing the data sets from, from various heritage bodies. Uh, this would allow us to set up our own search and mapping tool and importantly it could include a way for us to upload images directly to competition. Now some of the sites already existed on this database but it was only around 10 or 15 percent so a lot of information was being added for the first time. Uh, we chose what kind of information we wanted to import so there was the name of the site, uh, the coordinates, administrative authority and a unique ID. The importing process was again done by one of our volunteers. He essentially took an Excel spreadsheet uh, which contained all this, all this information for each site and began an automated process to import it. Once this stage was complete, the visualization process could begin. It was possible to create a map of all the listed buildings or scheduled monuments within a given area. You could do this on an administrative level, so the city of Salford or the city of Edinburgh, as you can see on the map behind me, or within, say, five miles of a fixed point. Um, there's also a web interface where you can tell the tool to search for sites nearby your location using a GPS in your phone. The distribution map here shows all the Category A listed buildings in Edinburgh, so those which are most historically significant. Um, in case you're not familiar with Edinburgh itself, um, they're mostly concentrated towards the old town, which happens to be a UNESCO heritage site. Uh, and if you were to zoom in, you would see that entire streets are made up of historically significant buildings. This simple data forms an excellent outreach tool. Wikilos Monuments uses this information to get people to go out and photograph nearby sites. Now the data itself is quite straightforward and it serves a competition very well because you can introduce a filter to say which of these sites we already have images for. Now we're lucky in the UK that we can run such competition because our copyright laws permit it. In particular, freedom of panorama means that more recent structures, which might still be copyrighted, can be photographed. In other countries, however, this isn't always the case. So in Italy, if you visit somewhere like Pompeii and take a photo of 2,000-year-old ruins, you can't use that image without special permission. Uh, the branch of the Italian competition has invested a huge amount of volunteer time in liaising with local heritage organizations to secure permission to upload these images to Wikimedia, um, thereby creating a publicly shareable and openly licensed resource. It's hoped that in the long term, the competition can be used as a way to encourage countries to be more open with their copyright laws. We're now at a stage where we're looking to add more information to the database about these historic sites. So location information is wonderful, but what, what else can we add? The more we have, the more interesting stuff you can do with it. So we can create a dynamic map, but once we add information such as um, when a building was constructed, uh, who the architect was, uh, whether a site has been excavated, you can create different visualizations. So perhaps a map of all the structures designed by Christopher Wren or all the houses built between 1750 and 1800. Because this information is created within a database, it can be easily translated into other languages. And it's already feeding through into some 
automatically generated content on Wikipedia. What this means is, if a researcher is interested in how many quadrangular castles there are in the UK, they can ask Wikidata for that information. And it can produce the result in French or Spanish or even something like Anglo-Saxon or Latin, if you're feeling really fancy. The plan for the future is to find more sources of information and to enrich what we currently have. Wikilos monuments and connected open heritage often away, offer a way for people to explore and share their built heritage. So keep an eye out for the competition running again next year, hopefully. And moving back, uh, being late to the party is actually a good thing in, in, for, for the UK because they're already in Wikidata and the rest of the world is not in Wikidata, so, so they're ahead of us in, in this case. Uh, what we're planning to do in the future, as, as Richard say, uh, do even more of, of the data, uh, connect even more of the data, uh, figure out new technical solutions. The smartest people doesn't work for us, so, so we need uh, other people to, to get in and, and say we can do this also. If we just get this data, we can connect it in this way, or we can build an app doing that, or we can do other stuff that, that we haven't even thought about yet. Uh, and, and to take care of the technical problems that, that uh, we have to overcome to figure that out. Uh, build more visualization tools. As he said, we can get a map showing all the, the castles of a certain time period uh, built by someone. Uh, using Wikidata, we can also connect it with the people who used to live there, with the people running companies larger than having 3,000 employees or stuff like that. As, as long as it's in Wikidata, we can do all kind of, of uh, different uh, questions. Uh, Wikipedia integration, uh, translation to other languages. We don't need people to translate it. We can, to, to every language, if we translate it to, to if we translate one specific term, uh, it can be used in, in other, in all the places where it's used, so, so we can get more out of it. Uh, structured data, uh, not having pros, uh, having everything in a structured manner makes it easier for, for computers to talk to them, for uh, traveling apps to, to recommend going this walk takes you by several heritage sites that walk only a few, so, so take that walk instead. Um, so, so that's what we're working on. Uh, we're also dreaming of, of 3D applications, how to figure out how to get 360 images. That's being more and more popular with the specific cameras taking images all around uh, instead of uh, just taking what's in front of the camera, how we can work that into material, how we can make that uh, easy viewable on, on Wikipedia and other sites. And as Richard say, free, said, freedom of panorama, how we can make sure that uh, throughout Europe, throughout the world, it's possible to take building pictures of both buildings and sculptures and monuments and not risk being having them deleted because it's not possible to, to show them in, in one country or, or another. Uh, and with that, I, I think we're almost out of time. So. Thank you.